Hi friends, ran across a great article for this season of Christmas and Advent about God coming to earth, about the birth of baby Jesus, what we often call incarnation in religious circles. It was written by the Reverend Dr. Susan Nicholson. She's a professor of New Testament at Asbury Seminary, primarily of United Methodist Seminary in Kentucky. And she published it in November 23rd of this year in Firebrand Magazine. I was so impressed by it that I contacted her and she said, by all means, if you want to share that in a sermon, that's why I wrote it. So with her permission and her blessing, I'd like to share this with you. Typically, I'm more extemporaneous when it comes to sharing a message, and this one will be read, but it does include some of my thoughts and has been modified a bit, but it's primarily a message that I'm grateful for from Reverend Dr. Suzanne Nicholson. I hope it adds meaning and depth to your life, especially in these challenging COVID times. Let's begin. During this holiday season, our minds may drift towards memories of warm crackling fires, the scent of gingerbread and pine in the air, and the jingle of sleigh bells as we recall the sweet taste of grandma's sugar cookies or some other memory that warms our heart of Christmas. Because our memories are formed and empowered by the experience of our senses. So if these days we're watching a family gathering on a computer screen, it just doesn't compare to those in the flesh events. A video of a newborn can't compete with the ability to hold a baby, to smell that newborn skin, and to stroke their soft hair. There's something different, something powerful, something potential in the presence of others. Being present with one another means that at that one moment we can chat across the room and in the next moment, experience the full embrace of that loved one. Our senses, senses just tingle with the possibility. But on a computer screen, not so much. I know recently I'm able to communicate with my grandchildren and my son via Facebook portal. Did that just last night. And it was good to be able to share and see how their day went, but it's not the same. Those air hugs are just not the same as the real thing. These past eight months of quarantine, Zoom meeting and social distancing have made us aware of our longing and our need of real community. Whether it's the joy of high-fiving our best friends when our favorite sports teams wins or singing in harmony in a church in a close-knit pews or just holding the hand of a dying loved one we long for the energy and emotional satisfaction that only real presence can provide and now we move to the connection to the birth of Christ the incarnation. This intense longing for real presence points us towards a deeper understanding of the incarnation. At a gut level, we have come to understand that real presence matters. This has always been part of the Christian theology, of the Christian story. 
From the creation story of Genesis, where God speaks the physical realm into the existence and declares that creation is good, to the burning bush appearance of the Lord to Moses, to the provision of manna and quail and water before a hungry and thirsty and sometimes complaining people, the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament continually point us to a God who refuses to abandon creation. This God is known because of God's involvement in creation. God refuses to remain unknown and uninvolved. This God of love refuses to remain unknown and uninvolved. Instead, God gets down in the dirt with humanity. God takes on the flesh of humanity who was made from the dust. It is a God with skin on. Charles Wesley, one of the original Methodists, along with his brother John, Charles being the hymn writer, John being the preacher and theologian, Charles wrote these words called Glory Be to God on High about God coming to earth as baby Jesus, where he writes, See the eternal Son of God, a mortal Son of Man, now dwelling in the earthly clod, whom heaven cannot contain. Stand amazed, ye heavens, look at this. See the Lord of earth and sky, now humble to the dust he is, and in a manger lies. Wow. Wow. The beauty of the paradox of the incarnation is almost incomprehensible. But God's own design of our very own human bodies speaks to the goodness of physicality. God gave us the senses of touch taste, sight, smell, and hearing so that we might experience the physical world. The longing that we feel to be present with our loved ones in a time of COVID is not merely a spiritual or emotional desire. Rather, it speaks to the fullness of the physical experience that God has designed for humanity. The fullness of the physical experience that God has designed for us. Hear these words of Reverend Nicholson, these next words. They're a little deep, but they're very important. In a broken world, it might be easy for us to dismiss physicality. Sin has wrecked such havoc upon the created realm that we might mistake the realities of illness, hunger, thirst, and physical pain for a commentary about the value of this world. Some of the early believers made this error, arguing that the physical realm was imperfect and only the spiritual realm mattered. As a result, to them, any idea of God becoming flesh in the incarnation or remaining in the flesh at the resurrection appeared to be foolishness. These errors continue in some theologies even to this day and have perpetuated the myth that a purely spiritual and disembodied existence with God in the afterlife is the only way to true happiness. However, however, she continues, the empty tomb argues otherwise. God did not abandon the broken world. Rather, God redeemed and restored the flesh so that the risen Christ would be the first fruits of redemption. 
Hear this about the life of Christ. Jesus regularly and fearlessly used the physical to demonstrate the spiritual. When Jesus healed the leper in Matthew 8, 1 to 4, Jesus could have easily pronounced that from a safe distance. During this COVID world, something unfortunately we need to be doing. But Jesus reached out and physically touched the leper so that he might bring a more fuller restoration. Rather than uncleanliness spreading to Jesus from the leper, the holiness of Jesus spread to the afflicted man and welcomed the afflicted person back into community. For Jesus in God, it is about engagement, not separation. It is about healing, not abandonment. Let us join and follow Jesus in this work, for we are the body of Christ. The cross itself bears witness to the full commitment of God to bring restoration. Only the perfect Son of God could pay the high price of sin, but only a human could redeem other humans. Only this indivisible union of the two natures could accomplish salvation for humanity. The real presence of God in this world is a commitment formed of a deep and abiding love. The real presence of God in this world as the Christ child is a commitment to a deep and abiding love. Love came down at Christmas. Love came down at Christmas. It was not necessary to God to be a feeling being, but it was purely in meeting our needs that God did so as the Christ child. Christ took on flesh despite the cost, the danger, and the pain. In assuming human flesh, Jesus says, I love you enough to experience this with you. God with us is the message of the nativity as found in Matthew chapter 1. The Gospels not only speak of Jesus' divinity, but they emphasize Jesus' full human experience. He hungered, he thirsted, he became tired, he wept, he grew angry, he was filled, filled with compassion, and he died. Even his resurrection body, immortal to be sure, kept the scars that bear testimony to his full humanity. When Thomas doubted, the resurrected Jesus showed Thomas his wounds. Real presence matters. God with skin on matters. God did not stop engaging our senses after the resurrection either because God created us to experience the world in physical ways. God continues to interact with us in physical ways. The sacrament of baptism and the Lord's Supper, God, through them, God uses physical elements to communicate an inward grace to all who believe. John Wesley, the original Methodist, put it this way. It's not the eating of that bread and the drinking of that cup, the outward visible means whereby God conveys into our souls all that spiritual grace, that righteousness and peace, and the joy in the Holy Spirit, which is purchased by the body of Christ once broken and the blood of Christ 
shared for us. Therefore, Wesley says, let all who truly desire the grace of God eat of that bread and drink of that cup. From Wesley's sermon, The Means of Grace. Wesley further said that the Lord's Supper for him was his waiting on the way that God had laid out for him. And that by his expecting that he will be met there by God, because God promised to do so. That our physical experience matters to God, and so God meets us in that experience. Communion is more than just a symbol. It is a meeting with God. In conclusion, my friends, in this most unusual season of Advent, where separation from loved ones and fear of illness, death, and economic difficulties rule the day, it can be tempting to agree with some of those early believers that fleeing of this broken world would be the easiest fix. But, but, Advent, the coming of the Christ child, the incarnation, reminds us that this first ever in the flesh arrival of Jesus points not only ahead to the physical return of Jesus, but to a God that has not abandoned us, a God that will wipe every tear from our eyes, a God with us, a God with skin on. May it give us hope and joy and peace and love. Thanks for listening, my friends.